Chemistry lecture number 32, Atomic and Ionic Radius. Atomic radius is the uh, distance of the outer electrons from the nucleus. Electrons which have a negative charge are attracted to the positively charged nucleus. If the positive charge in the nucleus increases, the electrons will be pulled closer and the radius will decrease. So what we have a picture here is of lithium, beryllium, and this is boron. I forgot to write it in here. And on the periodic chart, lithium, beryllium, and boron are in the second period of the periodic chart. So we're going from left to right across the periodic chart. As we go from left to right, the number of protons in the nucleus increase. So we have three protons in lithium, four protons in beryllium, and five protons in uh, boron. So the amount of positive charge is increasing. Now as the amount of positive charge in the nucleus increases, uh, the negative electrons are drawn closer and closer. So as you go from left to right across the periodic chart, uh, the radius gets smaller. So what happens to the radius when we go down a column? Um, well, the next set of pictures show the radii of the atoms in group 1A. We'll start at the top with hydrogen and then go down uh, with lithium and then sodium. So I'm going to draw some pictures. I'm going to draw a picture of hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. And notice that we're going down the column on the periodic chart. We're going to see what happens to the radius as we go down the chart. Okay, so move this back a little bit. There's a picture of hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron in the uh, 2s orbital. So we have a single electron orbiting the nucleus here. The nucleus is this pink little dot right there. Now the next one is lithium. Lithium has three electrons two electrons in the first energy level, and then one electron in the second energy level. Now, this electron here in the 2s energy level wants to get close to the nucleus. Can't get as close as it wants to because these two electrons here in the first energy level are blocking this electron. In a sense, these two electrons in the first energy level are shielding this electron from the nucleus. So it can't get as close and the radius gets bigger. Now if we look at sodium, we have two electrons on the first energy level, that's right here, and then in the second energy level, two, four, six, eight, we have eight electrons in the second energy level. So this ring right here with eight blue dots, that represents the second energy level with eight electrons. And then one electron in the third energy level. So this one electron is represented by this arrow right here. Well, this electron would like to get close to the nucleus also, but there's even more shielding. The second energy level electrons shield uh, the outer electron, and the first energy electrons shield the electrons. We have two layers of shielding from the first and second energy levels. So now this outer electron really can't get close uh, as it wants to. So as we go down a column, the number of inner energy shells between the outer electrons and the nucleus increases. The inner shells shield the outer electrons from the nucleus. Consequently, they're held less tightly and they result in a larger radius. Thus, radii increase going down a column due to shielding. So the overall trend of radius size across the periodic chart is uh, left to right, radius decreases. Top to bottom, radius increases. Should be an S right there, sorry. If you go diagonally from the bottom left of the chart to the upper right, you'll go from largest radius to smallest radius. So, as you go from left to right, radius decreases. As you go down, radius increases. And if you go from the bottom left to the upper right, radius decreases overall. And there's a nice picture I can show you right here of the general trend. So, See how the radius gets smaller as you go from left to right? And see how the radius gets bigger as you go down? And then if you went from the bottom left to the upper right, radius gets smaller. Now let's talk about the uh, radii of ions. Uh, an ion is an atom or group of bonded atoms that has lost or stolen electrons. Ions have a positive charge when they lose electrons. And the more electrons they lose, uh, the more positive charge they have. Ions with a positive charge are called cations. 
If an atom steals electrons, it will have a negative charge. The more electrons it steals, the more negative charge it will have. Ions with a negative charge are called anions. And there's a way to remember which one is which. Now one way to remember that anions are negative and cations are positive is to associate them with a number line in the alphabet. So if you were to write out the alphabet, write the letters from left to right, you'd start writing A, B, C, D, and so on. If you were to draw a number line, a number line starts negative on the left and then becomes positive as you go from left to right. So here I've started writing the first three letters of the alphabet and then I wrote nion for anion next to the A and B I left alone and then sort of completed the word for cation here. And then below this I've drawn a number line with the negative uh, numbers on the left and the positive numbers on the right. So notice that anion is above the negative region and cation is above the positive region. So that's how I remember that anions are negative and cations are positive. Radii of ions are different from the uh, radii of nuclei of uh, neutral atoms. So regular atoms, uh, the number of protons equals the number of electrons, so it has a neutral charge or a zero charge. When you start stealing electrons or adding electrons, then uh, it develops a charge. Now, anions have a larger radii and cations have a smaller radii. And to explain why, we'll use an analogy. A man trying to hold three dogs on a leash. So we're going to use this analogy to explain why um, charge affects the radius. Now our hapless man uh, represents the positive nucleus trying to pull electrons towards itself and three dogs each on its own leash represent the electrons. And in this case each dog is trying to run away and the man is trying to pull on the leashes in an attempt to pull the dogs or the electrons in. So here's our picture. Here's our man who represents the nucleus. Here are the dogs that represent the electrons. Dogs are trying to run away the man is trying to pull the dogs in. So the man, the nucleus, is trying to pull the dogs or the electrons towards itself. Now let's say one dog gets away and you know, the leash breaks and then this dog runs away. And so now our man is only holding on to two dogs. Since he's only holding on to two dogs, one dog less, it's easier for him to pull the remaining dogs close to him and in a sense the radius decreases. Um, so if there are fewer dogs for this guy to hold, he can pull them closer. Now, let's, uh, instead of talking about dogs and uh, man trying to hold a dog, let's suppose we have a lithium atom that loses an electron. So here's the nucleus of lithium, and here are the electrons, and the nucleus is trying to pull the electrons uh, close to itself, and then one electron is removed. Okay, somehow we've pulled an electron off, and then the lithium is now not going to be holding on to three electrons, but it's going to be holding on to two electrons instead. Well, since the remaining the remaining electrons are going to be held more tightly, uh, making a smaller radius. Since there are fewer electrons to hold on to, it's easier for the nucleus to pull uh, them closer. All right, it's easier to pull fewer electrons towards yourself than more electrons. So as you remove electrons, uh, the remaining electrons will move closer to the nucleus. So when atoms lose electrons or gain a positive charge, the radius decreases. And then conversely, when atoms gain electrons or a negative charge, the radius will increase. So now that we know this, uh, let's see if we can figure out which one has the uh, larger radius. We're going to check chart position and charge. All right, so let's take a look. Sodium or sodium plus? Well, if it has a positive charge, it has a smaller radius, so sodium or neutral sodium has the larger radius. Okay, chlorine or chlorine negative? Well, chlorine negative has a negative charge, which gives it a larger radius, so it's chlorine negative. Hydrogen with a plus charge or hydrogen with a negative charge? Well, the plus charge makes it smaller and the negative charge makes it uh, bigger, so this has the larger radius. Iron 2 plus or iron plus? Well, the more positive charge it has, uh, the smaller the radius. So this has the least amount of positive charge between these two. This one has the larger radius. Sulfur with a negative 2 charge or sulfur with a negative 1 charge? Well, the more negative charge it has, the larger the radius. So that one has the larger radius. Magnesium or strontium? Well, let's look where they are on the periodic chart. Magnesium is right here, and strontium is right here. 
As you go down the periodic chart, radius increases, so strontium is the larger one. Uh, francium or fluorine? Well, let's see. Okay, Flan francium is over here. And then fluorine is way over here. Remember, as you go from the bottom left to the upper right on the periodic chart, the radius decreases, so francium is the larger of the two. Silicon or sulfur? Okay, let's see. Okay, so here's silicon right here, and then here's sulfur. And as you go from left to right across the chart, the radius gets smaller, so silicon has the larger radius. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 32, Atomic and Ionic Radius.